Hey guys, it's Kevin from Spiritus Systems and today we're going to talk about the third part of the cold weather layering series and that is on the insulation layer. The point of this series is not only to help you survive in a cold weather scenario, but it's also to help you create an efficient system uh, to help you accomplish a, a mission uh, without wasting calories or time. If you haven't already, please go check out the part one, which was on the base layer, and part two, which is on the wind layer, and this will help you understand how these layers will all interact with one another. So there's a common misconception about the insulation layer and in that it's often referred to as the mid layer. Uh, and I'm not gonna say that's wrong, but it's often misguided in the way that people think about that. The insulation layer can absolutely be the mid layer, um, but it's really not the most efficient way to go about it. Uh, the concept of the mid layer really came about when fleece and wool were the main insulators at the time. And you know, each of those materials are not very water or wind resistant. So you really needed to have some type of rain shell to go over that in inclement weather to be able to stay warm. The layering system that I really subscribe to is that of you know, legendary alpinist Mark Twight uh, and his concept of the belay jacket. The belay jacket is an ultra warm, you know, puffy jacket, oversized puffy jacket that will fit over everything that you're wearing. So Mark really thought of, you know, the base layer and the wind layer as your action suit. So that's what you would wear uh, during any type of activity or if you're moving. When you stop for a period long enough for you to get chilled, that's when you throw that belay parka on, you know, that'll keep you very warm in the coldest conditions. And then when you're ready to move again, you just throw that layer off uh, and start going again. So you may ask yourself, what if I'm wearing the base layer and the wind layer uh, and I'm moving and, and I'm still cold? Uh, and that will absolutely happen. You know, you can be moving just slow enough to where um, those two layers are not keeping you warm. And you can't really throw on that belay parka because it's just too insulated and it'll keep you too warm. So that's really where the idea of active insulation comes from, having some type of insulation to wear while you're moving. So an idea that a lot of people have in their mind of what an active insulation layer would be, would be their cotton hoodie. And really this is not what you wanna wear um, in a cold weather environment. This is great for the range and around town. It's comfortable, it's stylish, um, but if it's made out of cotton, it is not going to insulate you uh, when it's wet. And another downside of something like the hoodie is that it's bulky uh, and it's not very compressible if you're going to put it in your pack. Now you can get away with a hoodie like this as long as it's 100% polyester. Uh, so you're just gonna have to check the tag and make sure it fits those requirements. If it is made of cotton, I would avoid it uh, for that purpose. Another couple of similar options that I don't really recommend are, you know, fleece or wool type jackets. Um, they're very breathable, but they also have a pretty big downside is that they're not very packable. They're often very bulky and not very compressible. So I tend to avoid those as active insulation, but they are good around town and they are very comfortable materials to wear. Um, the next option we're gonna talk about is you know, kind of the synthetic jacket. Um, this one here is from Defense Mechanisms. It's like a normal puffy, but on the sides, it has fleece panels. And the idea behind these is that this allows you to, to dump heat from your core uh, while still having uh, warmth around the rest of your body. This is a pretty good option if you're a person that gets cold very easily. This is gonna be kind of like the warmer option of active insulation. Another example, which is kind of newer on the market, is the uh, Polar Tech Alpha, which is a puffy jacket and fleece hybrid. A lot of jackets are starting to be made out of this and, and they're marketed as the active insulation jacket, which it works pretty good because it is breathable. Um, an, an example that I don't recommend as active insulation is this Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. You know, I like this jacket a lot. Um, it is very warm and it's warm because the, sh the face fabric is very wind resistant. But with it being wind resistant, it's not going to be very air permeable. 
So you will overheat in this jacket pretty quick if you start moving in this jacket. And, but the plus side of this is that it does keep you warm if you are static. Um, but not what I would consider as active insulation. So the type of active insulation layer that I like to use is a puffy vest. Uh, the good thing about a vest is that it keeps your core warm, uh, but what I really like about it is that it doesn't have insulation on the arms, so heat is allowed to dump through your armpits and through your arms, and when I'm moving, even in very cold uh, weather, I really don't need insulation on my arms. It's really, most often it's gonna make me too warm. Um, another good thing about a vest is that it's very packable. It's um, very low weight and very low bulk. So having this option, I throw this on directly over my wind layer, and that's just another step in this stack. The reason I prefer a vest is that it's very adaptable, you know, and I can combine this with a belay parka uh, and be extremely warm in the coldest conditions. So that's what I wear while I'm moving, uh, either very slowly, like I'm creeping or stalking an animal or something like that, or I'm going to have to take very long pauses uh, where I'm static for quite a long time and then move again. Now, if I'm static for an extended period of time where I may get chilled, that is when I will take out the belay parka and throw that on over everything that I'm wearing. So the first example of the parka that I'm going to talk about is down. And down is something that I've avoided for many years because it has a major disadvantage that if down gets wet, it will lose its loft. And down needs to have loft to keep you warm so it can trap warm air in all those little uh, air pockets in there. So it has that disadvantage, but it also, um, if you have a lower quality down jacket, uh, you could possibly see down shifting within the baffles. Uh, and, that, and that'll be the down all on one side or the other. And then you have fabric touching fabric within the baffle and that will, will result in a cold spot in the jacket. If you're going to consider a down jacket, uh, you're really gonna want something that's higher quality um, and where they use a lot of down within the baffle itself. When you're shopping for a down jacket, you're gonna have to look at the spec sheets and see what the down fill power is. It's going to be a measurement of its efficiency. And you'll see on the low end from 450 and the mid range, usually about 650 to 700. Uh, higher end, you'll have around 800, 850, and then a premium type of uh, fill power would be 900, and that's really where it tops out. So those numbers are gonna be what the efficiency is, but it doesn't tell you how warm the jacket is. Uh, so you're gonna have to look at what the fill weight is. Um, and that'll either be measured in grams or ounces, uh, and you may have to do the conversion to see you know, how warm you want the jacket to be. Uh, so this jacket here is uh, a Kuyu Super Down Pro, and I do use this jacket while I'm hunting. What I like about down is that it is very compressible and it has the most warmth to weight ratio out of any type of insulation. Uh, modern down, like what's used in this Kuyu jacket, is treated with a durable water repellent. What that does is it allows the jacket to resist wetting out and losing its loft for a pretty long period of time. I really didn't consider using down jackets until uh, the DWR treated down became available. If I was in the field for an extended period of time, probably wouldn't choose down because it does have some drawbacks. Uh, if you do get a tear in one of the baffles, you can start losing the fill that's within the baffle. Generally, they don't use as durable as a face fabric. Um, and when you're shopping for jackets, you're gonna have to look at uh, the denier count of the face fabric itself. Uh, you know, that can be as low as like seven as a very thin uh, face fabric, all the way up to 7D, um, which, a lot, which some jackets will use. Um, and that will be more durable in the long run. But down jackets generally don't have a high denier count uh, for their face fabric itself. Good for civilian use or hunting use, but in those extended field environments uh, or you know, military uses, uh, I would generally avoid using down.
A quality down jacket is often going to be more expensive than its synthetic counterpart. Uh, but where synthetic really shines is for those extended periods of time in the field uh, where durability and weather resistance are your main priorities in the jacket. So um, synthetic jackets also differ in their fill weights. So you need to look on the spec sheet and see what is the amount of fill that the jacket has. So a common fill weight would be 60 grams like in this Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. And this is really good for around town, uh, even when it's really cold out. If you're just going from your car to the office or ca car to the grocery store, uh, this is a good weight to have. In the Rocky Mountains in the summer, I would always have at least a 60 fill weight jacket with me uh, because it does get cold at night. Um, so this is pretty good for above freezing temperatures um, where it's still getting cold at night. When it starts to get colder than that, once you start to dip below freezing, you're really gonna want a, a jacket with a higher fill power, um, something like 80 to 100, uh, or even 130 like the Stone Glacier Cirque jacket. So this has 130 grams of Primala fill, and uh, this will keep you warm all the way down to below zero if you're layering properly. Again, that's gonna depend on what your perception of cold is. Everybody has a little, little bit different perception of what they feel is cold, you know, depending on your body fat percentage, your fitness level, and what kind of climate that you come from. Um, but for most people, you know, 100 grams, around 100 grams of uh, synthetic insulation is gonna take you through most cold scenarios. If this is not enough and you need absolute warmth, uh, there is, there are jackets that have, you know, something like this, Audi gear jacket, which is 200 grams of Primaloff insulation. And this is gonna really take you to the coldest environments. And something about fit is, if you're, if you're just around town, sure, you, you, know, you want a snug jacket, it's gonna be more efficient in keeping you warm. For the belay type parka or the parka that you wear over everything, you're gonna wanna have it a little looser uh, so you can fit it over everything. And if you're gonna be wearing something like a chest rig, maybe you wanna go up a size so you can fit this over everything you're wearing, including your chest rig, so you're not taking that off uh, every time you're wanting to get warm. The difference between uh, this jacket and that Stone Glacier is going to be the face fabric, where this is gonna have a much more durable face fabric than that Stone Glacier. And Audi Gear does make a 100 gram version of this jacket. Um, so if you're looking for that durability in a 100 gram model, they do have a lighter version of this jacket as well. And one downside about something like this jacket is that it is not going to pack small at all. It is going to be very heavy. Uh, but you know, that's the penalty that you're gonna have to pay for that extreme warmth. And it's good to kind of figure out, do you need this level of warmth with you or can you get by with that 100 gram jacket? You're just gonna have to experiment and figure out uh, where you fall on that. Because um, if you can avoid carrying a heavier, a heavier jacket, you probably should. So this jacket's going to provide an insane amount of warmth. And my philosophy is that I wanna have enough insulation on me that I can survive through the night without a sleeping bag and without a warming fire. Uh, so the, the clothes that I have are my shelter. I want it to be warm enough where I can survive in the coldest conditions I expect to go through. As far as weather resistance goes, generally when you're wearing this jacket, it's going to be cold enough to where it's snowing. So um, you really don't have to worry about rain getting this thing wet, but even so, the synthetic insulation will retain over 90% of its insulation properties, even if it does get wet. Uh, so that is a major pro for having synthetic insulation. Uh, also, on the face fabrics of all these jackets, they're treated with a durable water repellent coating. Uh, and that's something that you can retreat uh, by getting a product such as Nick Wax and uh, washing it in or spraying it on um, after a few times in the field. That will keep water from soaking into the face fabric itself. So that's the Audi Gear HT insulated jacket. And now I'm gonna go through a few other popular options that are, that are out there. Uh, this one is the Architerix Leaf Cold WX LT. 
This one it has three ounces of ClimaShield, so it's about 85 grams of, uh, of synthetic fill. What's interesting about this one, this one has a wind stopper lining on it. So this is very wind resistant, uh, but what comes with that is that it's kind of loud. So, um, but all in all, a, a very good jacket to consider. So for a budget option, uh, there is the Army issued parka. Uh, this one is filled with Primaloft insulation. Uh, and it's nice because you can find these on eBay or if you go to a surplus store, you can find these. Uh, the Marine Corps has its own version of this, which is in Coyote Brown that they call the Happy Suit. Uh, and what's nice about this jacket actually, uh, which has a, a nice feature, is that it has pockets on the inside. So if you need to keep your gloves warm or if you need to keep a water bottle warm, um, you can put it on the inside of your jacket and keep it close to your torso and, and keep that water from freezing or, or keep your gloves warm so when you put them back on again, uh, they're not freezing cold. These jackets are generally pretty bulky and pretty heavy. Um, if you pick one of these up used, uh, you're definitely going to want to retreat the shell fabric with that durable water repellent such as the Nick Wax. But all in all, a pretty good option if you're looking for something on a budget. The next thing I'm going to talk about is kind of in its own category. It's not exactly a jacket. So what I have here is the Hill People Gear Mountain Serape. It's kind of like a beefed up poncho liner um, or whoopee for the army guys. This has 80 grams of Primaloft gold in it. Uh, so which is, it's much more than that poncho liner. Uh, and it also has an integrated hood to it. But what's also cool about this is that um, you can turn it into a coat as well. And it also zips into a sleeping bag. And, and since this kind of can be the poncho format, this is really gonna fit over any type of bulky gear that you're wearing, such as a plate carrier or a chest rig. And what's great about this is that uh, if you need concealment, whether you're glassing on a hillside or something like that, uh, this is really gonna break up your silhouette. So there's two different sizes of this. This is the backpacker version, which is going to be smaller. And then there's a full size version, which is going to be longer. So that's the Hill People Gear Mountain Serape. It's a great option, especially if you're static a lot, but it's also great if you're just, you know, gonna be spending a lot of time on a hillside uh, doing some type of observation work. So now that we've talked about keeping your core warm, uh, we need to move on to uh, keeping your legs warm. And for cold temperatures above freezing, you're generally not going to need any type of leg insulation other than maybe base layer pants. Uh, but when, when temperatures start to get below freezing, uh, you may want to consider uh, using an insulated pant as part of your system. So if I'm kind of on the edge of maybe it's cold enough to bring pants, but maybe it's not, I'll usually just bring uh, these down pants from Kuyu. Uh, and the reason I bring these is because they weigh practically nothing and they take up a very little amount of space inside my pack. These do provide a considerable amount of warmth for what they are. And they're a good option to have when the conditions get uh, a little colder than I expected them to be and I need a little bit more warmth on my legs. So the next pair of pants I'm gonna talk about are these synthetic pants from Kuyu. And the nice thing about these compared to the compared to the down is that these will insulate you when they're wet. So this is the pair of pants that I'll bring uh, in wetter environments. And I usually plan to wear these underneath my rain pants. Whereas the next pair of pants I'm gonna talk about, I'll usually wear these instead of rain pants. Uh, but these, I usually want them to fit over the pants that I'm going to wear. So I am not going to take my pants off to put these on. I want them to fit over my pants and not restrict my mobility. One feature to note about all these pants is that they have a full zip from top to bottom. Uh, and that's gonna be crucial for putting these on and taking these off uh, without taking your boots off uh, because I don't wanna to have to try to fit my boot through the opening from the top. Uh, I just wanna unzip these completely and then wrap them around my legs and then zip them up. And that's gonna save you from tearing up your pants or having to take your boots off and getting your feet wet in the snow uh, because you're trying to put insulated pants on. Uh, so these are a great option from Kuyu. Um, these are very breathable. What's nice about them being so breathable is that I can wear them underneath my rain pants and not have to worry about overheating so easily. So the next pair of pants I'm going to talk about are the Outdoor Research Colossus pants. And as you can see, these are, um, 
these are much more insulated, but they also have a much more durable face fabric. This is gonna be much more water and wind resistant. The fabric's gonna allow you to kneel in the snow and not get wet. Really, you wanna size these so they can fit over everything that you're wearing. A very good option uh, if you expect to encounter very frigid temperatures. So to wrap it up, let's talk about a few key takeaways from this video. And the first one is on down versus synthetic. Down will not insulate you when it's wet. Synthetic will retain more than 90% of its insulation properties uh, when it's wet. Down will have a better warmth to weight ratio. So you're gonna have less weight and less bulk with synthetic. Uh, you're gonna have more weight and more bulk for the same warmth. We also have to consider what face fabric is on the garment. Can we get by with a lighter face fabric uh, so we have a lighter load in our pack? Or do we want one that's more durable and heavier? You're usually not going to have something that's both durable and light. The other point we have to talk about is do not bring cotton as your insulation layer. Cotton will not insulate you when you're wet. And the other thing we need to consider is the fill weight, and that is how much insulation is actually packed into the jacket. So you're gonna have to consider how much of that you will actually need for the temperatures that you expect to encounter. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.